Now we will see options that are related to part mesh size. This option opens a dialog box in which user can specify mesh parameters that are related to individual parts. These mesh sizes will not only be limited to the surface mesh that we are creating but they will also extend to volume mesh as well as to prism mesh. These values defined at part level will override global settings. So when we click on part mesh size, this dialog box that is part mesh setup will open up and here for each individual part we can specify parameters like prism, activating prism layers, hexacore, maximum size, height of the mesh, height ratio, number of layers of prisms, tetra size ratio, tetra width, minimum size limit, maximum deviation, etc. All these are defined for individual parts and whatever parts are present in our mesh, in our domain or in our geometry will appear here. So we can select individual parts and we can define the different type of mesh sizes to control the mesh complexity or mesh variation or mesh distribution locally around that particular part. We will discuss this part mesh setup later after the prism mesh lecture. Next option that we have for defining mesh sizes is at the local surface level. This is called as local surface mesh setup. This allows the user to apply mesh parameters to individual surfaces. The options which are available here are similar to those available in part mesh setup. If user specifies the surface mesh parameter then it will override the parameter specified in part mesh setup. The options that are available or are frequently used in this particular local surface mesh setup are surface selection, maximum size, height of hexa and height ratio of hexa. We will discuss them one by one. First let us discuss the surface selection by which we select a surface. It is available here in the surface mesh setup panel. There is the first dialog box. This allows the user to manually select surface over which the parameters are to be applied. First we click on the surface icon, then we select the surface by using right click on our screen, then we middle click to apply and select that surface and to complete the selection. Next is the maximum size which is given here. This specifies the maximum size of, of mesh on the surfaces. Generally specifying maximum size is sufficient. Maximum size will be multiplied by the global scaling factor. Next input is height which is given here. This is applicable in case of hexa meshing. This specifies the size of the first element normal to the surface. Next parameter is height ratio which is specified here. It is applicable in case of hexa meshing. It specifies the growth ratio in volume. Any value from 1 to 3 can be specified as growth ratio. If it is specified as less than 1 then the reciprocal of it will be taken. If height ratio is specified as 0.5 then it is 1 by 0.5 that is 2 is applied. These options that is hexa height and hexa height ratio will be used when the volume mesh is created originating from that surface or growing in, from that surface into the volume. Next option is number of layers. It specifies the number of prism layers that should be created growing out of that surface. Next is tetra width. It is applicable in case of tetra volume mesh. This creates a specified number of tetra layers of maximum size. The next option is tetra size ratio which is given here. This is similar to height ratio but for tetra meshing. This specifies the volume growth ratio in the volume. Next option is minimum size limit. This is similar to minimum size limit in case of curvature proximity refinement in global mesh parameters. This limits the mesh refinement to minimum size specified. The next option is maximum deviation. This option is used to control the mesh size so that geometry is captured correctly. It first calculates the distance between centroid of tri or quad element and surface and then if it is more than specified maximum deviation the element is split. The procedure is repeated till maximum deviation created is achieved. This particular option is given here. We will see an example of this particular option. The geometry is captured without specifying too much parameters. This is the geometry. This is maximum deviation 1. This is for maximum deviation 0.5 and this is for maximum deviation 0.1. It is an easy method to refine the mesh where needed but if not used cautiously it will increase the mesh count tremendously. 
further, we will discuss other options that are available in the surface mesh size. The mesh type and mesh method. We give this option here in the drop down box in the drop down selection. There is mesh type and mesh method. Mesh type and mesh method can be selected for the surface that we are meshing. This will override the global set mesh method and type of mesh. Remesh selected surfaces. This option is given here. It is a tick or activating option. This allows user to remesh the surfaces whose parameters are changed. If this option was not available, then change parameters will take effect only after computing the whole surface mesh again. So let us discuss further options that are available within the local surface mesh size. First is the mesh type and mesh method. This allows us to select the surface mesh type and the surface mesh method for that particular surface mesh. These mesh type and mesh method overrides the mesh type and mesh method that was set within the global settings. Next is remesh selected surface. This allows user to remesh the surfaces whose parameters are changed. If this option was not available, then change parameters will take effect only after computing the whole surface mesh. This option, although it is useful, it does have some problems, so it is not widely used. It is always better to create whole surface mesh again. Next is blank surface with parameters. This option is helpful during selection of surfaces. This blanks the surfaces over which surface meshing parameters are already defined, so they are not selected twice. Now we will see some visualization related tools which are present in order to see the effect of the inputs that we give for surface mesh and curved mesh. First is display tetra hexa sizes. For this, we have to go into surfaces within the model tree. We right click, then we get a selection option or selection panel that pops up. We go to tetra sizes and when we click on that, we see the tetra sizes that we have given. If we click on hexercises, we see the hexercises that we have given for this particular mesh. We can do the same for curves. We go to curves in the model tree, we right click, and then we select curve node spacing, which will show the spacing of the nodes that we have given for all the curves. If we click on curve element count, it will show the count of the elements that we have given for the curves. So these tools are basically for visualization purpose, that is, we can see the effect of the inputs immediately on the screen. Now let us move to the local curve mesh sizes. These, these are applicable to the curves instead of the surfaces. The curve mesh size is important sizing option in ICM. The user can specify the distribution of nodes and curves which in turn determine the surface mesh distribution. Many parameters in curve mesh setup are same as those available in the surface mesh setup. They also work in a similar fashion so we will not go much into detail. We will just discuss the important ones. These options are useful for both surface and tetra meshing and they are used to control mesh size and distribution on the surface boundaries or curves. Node distribution is controlled by using bunching laws that are available. We'll discuss them in detail later. But usually it is sufficient to specify only the maximum element size on curves. The important part is the methods that are available for specifying the local curve mesh parameters. There are three methods that are available that is general, dynamic and copy. General is similar to local surface mesh setup only with additional features. Dynamic method can interactively change the curve mesh parameters. Copy parameters copies the parameters from one curve to other. These are the three different tabs or three different panels that will open depending upon which method we select. If we select general, this is the tab in which we have to specify the mesh parameters. If we select dynamic, this is the panel in which we have to specify the parameters. If we select copy, this is the panel in which we have to specify the curve mesh parameters. Let us discuss the general options or the general method in detail. In this, we specify the number of nodes on the curve. Uh, this is similar to specifying maximum size on curve, which is calculated by ICM using curve length and the number of node information. Maximum size calculated is also displayed. The important option is bunching. Bunching is a method by which we control the distribution of nodes along the curves by specifying different bunching laws. There are various bunching laws that are available which specify the node distribution, but the widely used is by geometric. This is where we specify the bunching laws and different parameters related to bunching. To get the detailed algorithm or detail theory behind all these bunching laws, you can refer to the ICM user's guide. They give the detail of all these different bunching laws. We will not discuss them in detail as we have already understood the concept and how to use it. So we will restrict our discussion to the concept and the usage of this principle only.